What's up, handsome rambler listeners? This is Tony Trim. Thanks for tuning in to episode number 51 with Neil Brennan, co-creator of The Chappelle Show. He's also got a new Netflix special out called Three Mics. It's really good. I highly recommend it. Really, really good stuff. But anyways, before we get this episode started, I just want to announce some Hannibal some Hannibal tour dates. We got March 26th in Little Rock, Arkansas at Revolution Music Room. March 27th in Memphis, Tennessee at Minglewood Hall. March 28th, we got a live taping of the Handsome Rambler podcast at Third Man Records. That's Jack White's studio in Nashville. Uh, they got a live venue in there. We're going to do a uh, the live podcast in there. So come check us out on March 28th. And then March 29th through March 31st, we're going to be playing five shows in Nashville, Tennessee at Zanies. And then April 1st, we'll be at, in Charlotte, North Carolina at the Moorhead Street Tavern. And then on April 11th, we'll be in Seattle at the Neptune Theater. And then we're going to do five more shows in Seattle from April 12th through the 14th at Laughs Comedy Club. Uh, April 15th, we'll be in Portland, Oregon at the Keller Auditorium. May 9th in Mizzou, Missoula, Montana at the Wilma. Uh, May 10th in Boise at the Knitting Factory. May 11th in Spokane at the Knitting Factory. May 12th in Salt Lake City, Utah at the Complex. May 17th in Port Chester, New York at the Capitol Theater. May 18th will be in Brooklyn at the Brooklyn Academy of Music's Opera House. May 19th will be in Philly, Miriam Theater. So yeah, I think some of these are sold out. Well, I know some of these are sold out, but go to HannibalBurst.com slash tour and get some tickets and come see us. I'll be there. Hannibal will be there and some special guests. So so hurry up and get your tickets now at HannibalBirds.com slash tour and enjoy the podcast. Start the show. Having spent the last four days with you, I feel like I understand your voice better than I've ever understood it. And what it is, is it's like, uh, it's organized scattered, scatteredness. <laughs> Very inspired and really like, just like it's, I couldn't predict, you're, I could not predict what you were going to say from a, me and Hannibal just did a show together, like a TV show. He's around um, me for three days. We I wrote a pilot for Comedy Central and uh, it's a fake travel show and the show is Hannibal and it's a Hannibal shows me around Chicago, and then shit happens, but and um but I would write like areas for Hannibal and then he would attack them, and with a with a with abandon. Thank you, Tony. <laughs> And I couldn't have predicted. You said skeet on feet, which I'd never heard before. <laughs> you used the term skeet on feet, which I was like, I don't know where the fuck. Did, did you, had you thought of that before? I think. I don't know. I just was trying to say creepy stuff. Yeah, and skeet then, on feet. I think maybe somebody else, other people just talk about fucking with feet. Yeah. I think maybe because Chappelle does a joke saying yeah, I about fuck fucking feet. feet. Yeah. And I think I just thought something creepy. I said skeet on skeet feet. Skeet on feet. Yeah. And yeah, I yeah. just regurgitated. Yeah, it was great. <laughs> Fantastic. Um, that was a, that, but it was non-linear, but right on target, which was beautiful. Hoodclips.com. 
Hoodclips.com. <laughs> what is black? Tony, what would you say? We were trying to think of what the black porn hub is. Is there a black porn hub or you just. Black porn. Uh, I think you just go to. <clears throat> yeah, you type whatever. in Avenue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's what, what I said. But there are some sites, though. Yeah. Hood cl- I like, guess hood clips. Not but- hood clips, but it's like there's one ghetto gaggers and there's some hood shit. It's something ghetto with gaggers? hood. Ghettogaggers.com. <laughs> you know? It's a hood clip. You know it's, a, <laughs> it's black porn because at the end they fight. They, <laughs> they have a street fight at the end. They fuck and then they go like what? Someone breaks in and then they have a then they like have a then they spar. Yeah. Um That's like That was fun though, man. Yeah, it was fun. You were very you were fucking very funny and we had a nice it became like a buddy movie. It was it was it was definitely weird and it was a fun shoot. I hadn't shot I don't shoot in Chicago. Yeah. I shoot some maybe once a year. Yeah. Maybe. And it's it, but so it was fun to just be out in uh working in, in those areas, man. Yeah. I haven't done anything on well we we were on division in Laramie. That's five minutes from where I grew up. Is it but, really? Yeah. The premise is that Hannibal gets a mural dedicated to him, but it's he fucking looks bad in it. And that's the mural. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. But it was huge. It it's was like yeah, huge. I can see in scale. It was a three stories high on the side of a building. Okay. Um, and then we have to fix it, et cetera, et cetera. Comedy ensues. Um, Tony Trim, what's 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 going on with you, man? Uh, pretty much this. This has been my life. Just uh, this company Moog has just been sending me all kinds of funky shit. I think it's Moog. It's Moog. Is it Moog? Yeah, it's Moog. Is it really? Yeah. Everybody thinks it's Moog. Everybody thinks it's Moog. Yeah. I mean, that's what, I mean, that's how it's spelled. Yeah, why wouldn't you think that? Pronounced Moog. So they've been giving me a lot of toys, so I've just been in the been in the studio, just busy. In the studio. Learning out. Me and Hannibal were singing songs on the show. Yeah? Just yeah. freestyling songs. I just mean, yeah. Freestyling. Oh, yeah. all right. So, so basically, I was chilling. Yeah, it was, he was <laughs> Hannibal. You know, was Hannibal because yeah. he was singing songs. Like, Why um, is he not singing? And rapping. By the way, on the way over, so there's a white supremacist rally somewhere in Oakland. No, oh no, good. they wouldn't fucking bother with that. Oh, shit. Um, but they, Arian Foster, had a thing where he said their bars is trash. So let's talk about it real quick and see because they were on some chanting shit. They would chant. Oh, they chanted, but oh. Um, Is nation run of that terrible shit back again? Run that terrible shit back. White nation. White nation. Now we start the deportation. All right, cut that now shit out of it. White nation. White nation. Close borders. Close borders. Now we start the deportation. I gotta say, hearing it, reading it, I was like, that's not bad. Those, are, those, are, that's not a bad rhyme. But now hearing it, it didn't work at all. It sounds off. Ugh. Close borders, white nation. Now we start the deportation. Well, that's what you get when you've got white people trying to write, you know what I mean? Hot <laughs> rhymes without <laughs> some kind of supervision. You're going to get just whack shit. Uh, that's what we have to look forward to in the white nation deportation. What? Close the borders. <laughs> uh, Let's relax. see if we can beat it. Should we try to beat it? Hey, hey, you want to write for them? Write for them? Yeah. Yeah. I knew, I knew, I knew America is where you want to be, but I'm going to need you to leave my country. Great. America is where you want to be, but sorry, I'm going to need you to leave my country. Great. Right, I know, know you got a son and a daughter, but we're gonna close up the border. the border. No anchor babies, no ifs or babies. You wanna be in my country, but I need you to leave. It's really not too fun for me when I see these immigrants up in my country. Whoa. That's good, man. I didn't realize that was in me. 
<laughs> That's what happened to a lot of people. <laughs> whoa, they was whoa, just whoa. being regular, and then they saw the rally, and Wait they were like, second. "You know God what?" Damn it. And they started walking toward it and oh, just saying, "Right." I just realized I don't I'm like a white immigrants. White Shit! <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Um. Yeah, man. That's yeah. right there. Mm-hmm. But that's but again, you're black, so you you're you're you can you can write you can spit at a level that the average white supremacist can't. That's what I would say. Yeah. Here he goes again. You about to? Uh. Uh. I need you to leave. I need you to go. Please leave. You gotta go. You gotta go. USA There's nothing that you could say To make me want to keep you here You gotta go I don't care if you fly, take a train or boat You gotta go We don't want you here no more You taking jobs Those jobs is ours Y'all lies you liars Criminals, get out of here don't be leaving no subliminal babies. <laughs> subliminal babies. <laughs> subliminal yeah. babies. Yeah, no subliminal babies. Nah, yeah. Nah, there's no place for that in our country. Nah, man. So. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that was weird. Yeah, it was weird. We probably cut that out. Nah, we're gonna leave nah, that there. You, you gotta leave. First of the first round. The first round was like straight. Was he? How long did you write on all that? Um, I really, I really genuinely. Yeah, I wrote. Okay, what happened was I was writing for Singled Out. I wrote for the pilot for Singled Out on MTV. Right. This is nineteen ninety five. Chris, Chris uh, Hardwick. Chris Hardwick. Yeah, and Jenny yeah. McCarthy. That's right. And um, Chris Hardwick been at they ass for a minute. Here. God yep. damn. Yep. Um, Twenty two years in the game. Deep. Yeah. <laughs> and and more like than a that, pretty yeah. high level. Yeah. Um. And I wrote for the 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 uh, pilot of all that in the office next door to us. In that we shared an office in like a common space was uh, the dudes from the sitcom Head of the Class. I don't know if you remember Head of the Class, but um, it was on ABC. I remember that show. Yeah. Yeah. It was like the British guy, right? Uh, yeah. It became the British guy. That was later on. Oh. Okay. It was these dudes, Dan Ro- Dan uh, Schneider and Brian Robbins. And uh, they were starting this kid sketch show, and I pitched to them. Yeah. I pitched some ideas. They were like, you're not right for this year. Uh, they didn't hire me. And then uh, when they got picked up for the second season, they brought me in. And that was like 1995, I guess. God and damn. I wrote for, uh, I don't know, five months probably on all that, season two, which some say is the best se- No, I don't know what they say. <laughs> Historians will tell you is the best year of all that. Uh, no, but I was not good at it, and I did not get much shit on. I did write uh, the Pierre Escargot, Keenan in the Bathtub. That was mine. The original? Yep. The OG? Yep. Okay. And now, all that presents a semi-educational moment. Holiday French with Pierre Escargot. Est-ce que je peux vous offrir un test dans le show? Merry Christmas. May I get you a cup of hot fat? Sune pay a lote some grammar. That's not an elf. That's my grandmother. <laughs> hey, pray guard to cool sare in a las ve ye seer montuif. Hey, look what the reindeer left on my roof. <laughs> Um, and uh, and I wrote some um, some uh, what was the milkman some shit was there a maybe what was uh, maybe Kel had a character I don't know I, something with turkey I don't know what the fuck it was some allergy shit and um, I wrote an ear boy that was pretty hot and um, but they mostly would just make fun of me in fact Brian Robbins at one point said I should have fired you when I had the chance which is Ooh. pretty fucking funny <laughs> um, for a boss to just say, "Hey, I should have fired you." Is this uh, after? This is like years. No, after? this is no. This is during the show. During the show, they pick up my option, and then he jokingly, not even, but not really jokingly, because I wasn't really getting anything on. Uh, said, uh, "I should have fired you when I had the chance." Yeah. And Dan Schneider used to throw shit at me. 
And he made us go to a gun range at one point. That's the only time he I had his own gun range. gun range. No, but he was he, just he like he, he loved one? guns, the dude. And he made us go to a gun range to like in the middle of the writing day, which I was like, I I hate this. It's the did, only time I've ever been to a gun range. Did it? When you did y'all go back to the room after that? Yeah. Did yeah, you, man. Did you feel more productive? I just felt like it was also just shitty to like go from a gun range to like writing kids sketch comedy. You know what I mean? Maybe he was trying to create a dark vibe. You know, <laughs> <laughs> that's the, that was the motif of the season was violence. Um, and uh, but it was a good experience, Hannibal. I'll tell you yeah. why. Maybe you can relate to this. I don't know if you care about writing at all on TV shows, but it gave it gave me a good uh, like I would think of something and not say it, and then right. somebody else would pitch it. Yeah, and get it. I'd be like, see, I should just say shit. When, yeah. I have the, when I think of it. And that was like, it gave me that sort of like, not confidence, but it was like, gave me like, oh, okay. I, like if I'm, just think of the shit. You just say the shit you think of. Because in a writer's room, it can get like, you get shy. Or you right. get like, you get in your head like, you're not pitching enough. Yeah. You got to come with it. You haven't said shit. That, that dude got three ideas in in a row. Or, and then that was like where I was finally like, eh, let me just pitch. Yeah, you got to let him fly. Yeah, exactly. if you, uh... Even if it's not right in that form, somebody yeah. else might it, yeah, somebody you go, else I, might yeah. tag onto it yeah. and like re you know, set it for the right. You can space. try to inspire yeah. someone else with yeah. like this isn't the idea, but here's the area. Yeah. Maybe. Do you get like uh some kind of a commission if they use more of your jokes? Do you get like no. do they throw you a bonus or something? No. Nah. So. On T V if you're just on the staff, like a lot of times if you see like a sitcom will be written by so and so. Yeah. But that just means they wrote the first draft. Yeah. The whole room, 15 people could rewrite it. You could end up having no jokes in it. Yeah. And But you get credit. That happens Duh. a lot on The Simpsons, apparently, where they'll rewrite the shit out of everything to the point yeah. where, like, whoever has credit may not even have the most jokes on it. Dude, they uh, wanted the, the season finale of 30 Rock yeah. when I was there. Uh, there was a, a script that was group written, just in the room from scratch, from page one. Through just in the room. Can I guess who got credit for it? Yeah. <laughs> Tina Fey, Robert Carlock. Hannibal Burris. Hannibal Burris. <laughs> Ooh, to the week. The season finale of nice. 30 Rock. Season five, I think. And I was not cool with it. Oh, because, <laughs> oh, that's funny. <laughs> I was like, because oh. I think they drew in the room and they were like, and I maybe got a couple jokes in it at, at that. Were you not cool? That's That's such a comics way to think of it. Cause Dog, like I was panicking. I was like, I was like, I talked to uh, uh, another writer that was there, Volley. I was like, Yo, man, they giving me credit for this. I didn't do really do shit on this, and then, and I was. Did uh, you feel guilty, or you felt like you didn't want felt the credit? Weird, man. Because yeah. I knew I, if it's, it's a written by, and it's yeah, not, not even close to a yeah. written by. It's not even a yeah, third. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I didn't like it. That's interesting. That happens a lot on, uh, I did a pilot and uh, it di- it got picked up, but like I had nothing like, and I get money every time it's on. Yeah. And I'm like, eh. they reshot the pilot and I still get money for every time they, every episode. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, mm, okay. I mean, cool. But I don't, I'm not like proud of it or nothing. It's just one of those like, eh. Yeah. <laughs> And I would do press around closer That's to so the end. Yeah. And they'd be like, and they'd so, be like, so the, the way you uh, connected the storylines in the season finale, I mean, <laughs> first of all, that was one of my favorite episodes ever. It was crazy. I mean, just the tone of it was bananas. And what were you? And I'm like, yeah, you know, we were just trying to. <laughs> yeah. It's funny when I thought of it. Yeah. Because you can't explain to someone, like, no, it, I had nothing to do with it. <laughs> I had nothing to do with it. Yeah, that's happened to me before, where it's like, yeah, all right, yeah, I'll take credit, but like, uh, I didn't really have shit to do with it. Hold on, let me blow my nose. Stop. 
Yeah. Chris did some savage shit last night, by the way. Chris Rock, we're in Oakland with Chris. And um, they were talking about, I'm thinking about this because uh, I saw Chris do something gross, which I think I'm going to Instagram for Halloween because it was the scariest <laughs> shit I've ever seen, which is plate of food, uh, plate of Chris's dinner, and then six inches away, he's clipping his own fingernails. <sighs> I was like, this is <laughs> fucking wild shit. And then uh, Sherrod Small, his cousin, said, you think that's gross? You've never seen Chris blow his nose with leaves. Oh! And I was like, that's not even on the same. That's not even on the same fucking, like, plane to me. What? Like a recent Chris? No, like when they were kids, oh. blowing, like playing oh. football. Oh, okay. That would be funny if Chris Rock still blew his nose with leaves. Yeah, it's like... It's on his rider. Can I get a box of leaves? Um. He says, I'm just outside, just picturing it windy and just. Uh, <laughs> just, just oh, but, like, but, that's some. Snot, I mean, I see people do snot rockets, not yeah. like regularly. Honest, yeah. But, like, that's fairly. Like, leaves to me is not better than snot rockets. Yeah, it's nature. As long as it's not poison yeah. ivy, poison oak or something, then you all. Good. But the fingernails I found. I mean, yeah. it's his dinner. Yeah. So, God bless. Yeah, but still. But, it's, like. It's a weird. I lose, lose, lose moment. fingernails, lose hair, anything around the food. But you, it's yourself. It's your DNA. It's so all DNA. It's all really your DNA. You're just, maybe you're strengthening your own human. Maybe that's what part of one of his secrets. Yeah. <laughs> one of his comedy secrets. He eats his own eats, nails. Yeah. Maybe that's well, how well, it becomes. People just, got the nail biting thing going on. They eat their own nails all the time. Yeah. Yeah. LeBron so. eats his nails every game, and they show it, which is a weird. Do they still? Does he still do it? I don't know. When he goes to the bench in the third quarter, they always show him like. Really? Oh, but shout out to Hannibal Burris uh, also for. Uh, I, we probably shouldn't say this on the air, but Hannibal Burris has broken off his uh, NBA um, streaming. What yeah. is it? NBA. NBA League Pass. NBA League Pass. I do. I have been given the password, and it's. Uh, I've had a couple of really great nights. Um, it's outstanding. You just check in great, on the game. Yeah. Check in, check out. You yeah. can re- the, the, I watched the condensed one last night. They Twelve the condensed minutes, fifteen version. minutes, fifteen minutes. All the scoring. That's it. You went yeah. for a league pass. You can. It's all the NBA games. You pick, uh, and then you can. After the game is done, you can pick a conven- condensed version, and it just oh. shows the scoring. And they've that edited it down. Fifteen for you. minutes. Do they do that for baseball? They sh- absolutely should. Yeah. Hey, <laughs> sounds, your, I feel like good. I'm louder than you guys. Is that? I feel like you're. Well, uh. Nah, that's just uh, that. a. Yeah. Uh, uh, I can always fix it in post. Oh, you can't. All right, yeah, so you yeah. got this on channels. All right, yeah, we're good. Let my man let let Hannibal get some. Yeah, no. Um, he uh, Hannibal gave me um, the uh, it's been great. And which is which begs the question, Neil? Why not just get your own password? It's not. The it's same. some other shit. That's what I've. The, here's another thing I've learned about Hannibal in the last three days. A cheap man, not. Maybe per capita, per, um, for the amount of money I think you have, your cheapness level is fucking impressive. (laughs) (laughs) It's really like, it's really like we're in an Airbnb right now. Yeah. Hannibal's doing shows with Chris Rock. I know the neighborhood of what he's making. Chris would have gotten him a hotel. He's probably given you some stipend for the hotel, right? They offered me a hotel. And you're and are you? Did you take the money? I'm getting money. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so you're taking the money. I know how much the rooms cost. Where we're staying. Right. Hannibal's making a hundred dollar a night profit <laughs> off of this Airbnb, <laughs> and he gets a three. <laughs> And he gets a three-bedroom Airbnb. In fact, as a thank you for doing my pilot for Comedy Central, I'm going to get you, and I wanted to present it on the air today, yeah. I'm getting you a $1,000 Airbnb gift certificate. Oh! Gifts wow. on gifts on gifts. $1,000. That was- Which for Hannibal is going to probably get you five nights. So it's my dad, man. My dad was uh I'm I'm uh I'm not cheap like in a where it's disgusting way where you're like that person doesn't like I make sure to leave decent tips in places. Yeah. 
that type of thing, but I don't want to spend money where it doesn't need to be spent, no matter the amount. But then sometimes I do. I Are you paranoid about people um, writing if you don't tip? Like, I took a picture with Scotty Pippen on Instagram a couple of weeks ago, mm-hmm. and like four different people wrote, oh, like, yeah. no tip and Pippen. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I was like, that's not the most interesting thing about Scotty Pippen. <laughs> like, that's not, that shouldn't be yeah, what you but say. It, that, it comes up a lot with his name. Yeah. yeah. No, I know. <laughs> and and, the, and it rhymes. Yeah, the rhyme, that yeah. rhyme is yeah. really what. I mean, that's just, that's unfortunate yeah. that it rhymes that nice. <laughs> that's bad. For that's him. the main thing. Yeah. It is other nice. people, yeah. Yeah, no tipping, Britney Spears doesn't <laughs> fucking really flow. roll off the tongue the same way. Um, but uh, are you, do you worry about like your rep? Uh, not my rep. Well, it's just where nightlife is pretty small. Oh, yeah, huh? That's funny. <laughs> it's a small world, the club, nightlife world. If nightlife and just the rest, if like, especially if you go to places a lot and shit, it just makes shit smoother when you come back. Yeah. This is uh, a. <laughs> There's this place in Chicago that I go to, and uh, we've done events there, and, you know, I've taken care of the, the bouncers there. What and is that? What, walk me through <laughs> I mean, like, that. Just like if, they, if we made some money that night, I took care of the security for, you know, watching the DJ booth or whatever. But tell me and, what that means. Give me talk. Give I me tipped a number. like, uh, say 100 bucks or something. Right. right that's great. $100 yeah, but, you can't argue with. Oh, well, it might have been it might have been a couple, but it was one night I was back in the spot, and I overhear this guy. Um, he say something, and we having a a back and forth, and then the security they kind of see it happen, and then um, you know they start converging on dude without even it, and then he started the guy started saying some other shit, and I was just like, get him out of here. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. And it was. <laughs> it felt good. And but I don't think that happens without tipping. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Yeah, no, that's absolutely. You're you're absolutely right. You yeah. were like became you became like a drug lord <laughs> just by marriage. But he was a, like they could. It's just sometimes people be on bullshit and yeah just, yeah yeah like yeah you, know, you gotta go yeah that is nice though like if you're doing a show and people are making noise and you're like okay. You know what? You gotta go. Yeah, and they it, just go like, "What? Fuck you!" No, you right, got. Hey, here's the thing: I, I can control that. <laughs> it's one of the things I'm in charge of is who can, who gets to go. And nobody, unless you said some wild, mean shit, nobody's ever on the heckler's side. <laughs> oh, of course not. <laughs> it's such an easy turn. These people, they got babysitters. They pay for that night out. They yeah. pay for gas money yeah. and the ticket. Yeah. They didn't come to you see are. you. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Now they are ostracized. By the way, speaking of hecklers, <laughs> in this pilot, me and Hannibal went to that hot dog place, the Wiener Circle. Oh, we went to oh dog and uh, Tone. and the woman, whoever's like the main lady the there, roaster, yeah, uh, yeah. She fucking tore us assholes on a level like yeah. it was, but I couldn't. I respected she was, it. She was so it fucking was, funny. Doc, we gotta have her on. She, really? she yeah. was so fucking funny. Like not like with no warning, just immediately saw Hannibal. She saw. She started roasting me. She was at the counter. I'm out. I'm outside. Hannibal's on the sidewalk, literally uh, sixty feet away. They like giving me just a touch up powder, real quick. powder in his makeup. And then she's like, "Motherfucker, what you got me getting makeup on for? You already black as coal." And just started yeah. firing. <laughs> look at look at Forrest Whitaker. And look then at Forrest Whitaker. It was look with his little off, eyes, his little eye, motherfucker. Off to the motherfucking races after that, dog. Yeah. And so I get in there, and she firing off. And I try to fire back a little bit. Yeah. I fire back a couple, oh, but I kept, just yeah. but it wasn't. Dog, the it speed. wasn't. But she's yeah. got the advantage because yeah. she a works at a hot dog place, so it's kind of not for us to be like, "Fuck you, you work at a hot dog place." Like yeah. you know what I mean? Like we can't really hit her back. Yeah. But she was like, just it was fuck, just the speed. How, it was just, I mean, just like literally, just like you. What did you say? You bow legged and knock need. Yeah, I mean, just like really sweet, going. funny, fucking like bang, just hitting hard. Call me Benjamin Button. Call me Chicken Little. Um, <laughs> like said that I needed some insure. Yeah, to drink. <laughs> I mean, but then there was a time where I felt like potent. we had, where we had gotten all the footage we needed, and then yeah. we were just kind of standing there, and then she just kept on roasting us, and I was like, "Oh, I, I think I think we need to get out of here, guys." <laughs> <laughs> 
The feelings were getting hurt. It wasn't even feelings getting hurt. It was just like, I already done took about 30. Let's, uh, <laughs> let's get out of here. Call the fight. So throw in the fucking towel. Let's, like, look, let's go. We got the shot. Yeah, right, we guys? got what we need. It was, was... You remember that lull where it was like kind yep. of a lull a little Absolutely. bit? And then she just kept on firing She off. came at a fucking old couple. Came, not even old couple. Like 50-year-old fat white dude and an Asian lady. And she's like, look at Peter Griffin and Margaret Cho. Just like immediately. <laughs> she was just going in, dog. Uh, um, yeah, she might have had a hot hand, like especially hot hand, but she's like, she's fucking funny. Like, uh, like she should go on the road. Like, not even, uh, like, she could for real. She's funnier than most. She's funnier than, she's better at that than maybe anyone I've ever seen. It was just really fast. Yeah. It's this guy, uh, uh, Don Terrio. Ontario Hudson is a guy from uh, Chicago. Where's my phone? He's like, and he just has, he has that type of style of roasting. Yeah. Where he, he does that split screen thing and where somebody with a, with a weird look or a weird picture. And then he just, uh, he has his catchphrase and then he just goes in roasting uh, for, and he just, that's how he's built his following. But he has that same pace. He's a Chicago dude too. Where Chicago motherfuckers just know yeah, how just, to they don't, just, just yeah. uh, know how to roast. Let me see. I gotta bake another one on baby. 21 Savage, your ass frail as hell, boy. You must be ready to attend this barbecue, my brother. Yeah, barbecue. Boy, your ass look like you walk around saying sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. No, if a motherfucker threw a wet piece of rice at your bones, your shit'll break. You're skinny as fuck, boy. Your ass got a body full of catfish bones. Little body long leg ass. Asparagus leg ass. Needle and thread leg ass. Air Max 95 shoestring leg ass. Flamingo leg ass. Hey Arnold leg ass. Rolled up band aid leg ass. Plastic butter knife leg ass. Your shit look like two premature breadsticks from a piece of hut near you. Little ugly ass, boy. Anorexic ant looking ass. Rastafari and grasshopper looking ass. Honey, I strunk the penguin looking ass, boy. And baby boy, if Count Dracula was on a slim fast diet looking ass, boy, every time you go to jail, you get out the same hour because you slide through the bars. Little ugly ass, boy. And baby, matter of fact, yo ass went on Ancestry.com and got a DNA test and found out you the third cousin to the roaches off man in black. Yo little ugly ass, boy. And baby boy. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah, I like, I just, the rhythm and shit of it is so funny to me. Yeah, it he's feels like, like I have ro- to give you thirty jokes. Yeah, and like he doesn't judge them. He doesn't know which ones. He doesn't care. It's just like this one, that one. I got this one. You like this? How about that? <laughs> How about over here? Look down there. Over there. <laughs> like he, there's no like he doesn't. It's just they're all once. It's just they're all the same quality level. <laughs> Booty ass. Booty um, ass. Yeah, that's some. I like that shit. Um, I respect. I. I um I I like that. All right, what else did I have on? Oh, uh, me and Hannibal had some um some not debates, but on the show that I'd like to bring public, which is uh how long do you think people wear pants for? Meaning, you put on a pair of pants, how many days are you gonna last? How many how many days? If you're, it's mostly guys because girls wear some pants. Well, it depends on the, the the kind of pants. Je- just jeans. Jeans is a different story. Jeans you could wear for like a month straight. The, uh, for real, you'd wear it for a month straight. Without, I mean, you're taking them off to sleep and to fuck. Yeah, and shit, right. Yeah, and to fu- well, I might leave them on to fuck. You know, <laughs> how it go? Well, jeans, well, denim, man. Like especially when you get new denim, you got to break them shits in. So like, denim doesn't stain well, and breaking denim in is denim in is a process. So I've owned a pair of like raw denim before. I rocked it for like a week straight because it went with everything. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And no, I'll take it like six days. That's about that's about my limit. Hannibal, what's your limit? Uh, until something bad happens. Yeah. They smell or they, they stink. They stink or yeah. I, I spill some sauce on them mm-hmm. or, you know. I had to, because um, you know. I went to D.C. last week before Chicago, so I haven't been home in like eight, nine days. Yeah. Um, and I had to get laundry done at the hotel in Chicago. And I got, all right, I had, like, two shirts dry cleaned, five pairs of underwear, five pairs of socks, and some pants. Anyone want to guess how much that cost? Oh, that was, that was $103. It's $108. <laughs> <laughs> 
And I was like, I need fucking insurance for this shit. I need fucking hotel laundry insurance. Like $108. Get the fuck out of here. Like how the f- and I could I really had no choice because I couldn't yeah. like I couldn't drop it off anywhere because I didn't know like they would have been co- like the hours we were working long hours. Um, That's bananas. One hundred eight dollars. Come on, yo. Hey Neil, how's Venice, man? Venice has a place to live. Yeah, it's great, man. They uh, they opened um, a Google and a Snapchat. Like their head, not their headquarters, but they open offices, so it's just getting like, it's getting like cleaner and nicer, and like the my, it's. I'm gonna make some money on this. Uh, again, I sound like a fucking yeah. dickhead, but, but you got that place a while. I ago. got the place like seven years ago. That's where we where, did the first champs. Yeah, where we yeah. did the first champs, and uh, and I got it like a, a seven years ago, and and now it's got to be. They opened Google and Snapchat basically like next door, oh, so I feel okay. like. But I don't really want to move anywhere. Yeah. Also, don't you feel like the world's going to end, like, pretty soon? Especially from that side. From the West Coast? Oh, because of Korea? <laughs> from right on the ocean. <laughs> yeah. Like, I keep thinking, like, oh, I might make a profit on this house. And then I'm like, this fucking world's going to be over. Yeah. And, like, <laughs> but I don't know where to go. Like, I, between, Kansas. like, yeah, between, like, you, you know, that's you, why, like, Kansas, Stanley- you have be ahead from either side. Yeah. What? What's going on in New York? What's going on over there? Yeah. Stanley, okay. you know, Stanley Kubrick Fucking moved. Go straight up yeah. into Manitoba. Stanley Kubrick moved to England because it was the furthest place from, like, the Russia and the United States in terms of nuclear warheads. Jesus. Like, in the 60s or 70s. Like, he was like, all right, he was that fucked up about it. Um, yeah. Between that and global warming, I'm like, ah, what are the odds this shit lasts another 150 years? The whole world or America? Yeah. Uh, I mean, I think the world as we know it is over in about 20. Jesus. That's dark. What do you think, Han? Uh, <laughs> I don't know, but, you know, I mean, if that ha- if so be it, because I'm like in the middle of my flyest years, probably. Right. So I would have did what I wanted to do by then. You'll find me in the club. I've never liked the club, like the club, the club. Yeah, never, it's just never been my scene. It's always me ending up like standing in the corner. Yeah, watching people get fucking sparklies on their champagne. Yeah, or their bottle services, and then yeah, hot chicks. Yep, douchey music. Yep, douchey assholes. Yeah, it's the club scene. I've never. Yeah. I've tried. I've DJed clubs. I could, I, could just, I could never immerse myself in that world. Yeah, no matter That's how best, hard I try. These places are the best if you're just working. Like, just go yeah. there and work, do your yeah. thing. That's that's the shit. But yeah, like when people like, hey Hannibal, thanks for coming. Just wanted to tell you, anytime you're in town, Kibbe, and just like, ugh, <laughs> yeah, it's fucking. I mean, they dirt bags. they did an after party for us once where it wasn't even a like they didn't even want us to spend do nothing. They were just like, just come. And we're gonna give you money to just chill out. What spot was that? I don't remember, but we they they set up a table. Oh, in Australia. Was it Australia? Yeah. They set up a table. We just all we had to do was walk in, sit down <laughs> in the VIP section, and they paid us for it. That's great. Yeah. God bless the club. They got money like that. You got bottle surface, you got money like that. I yeah. mean, it's some people you know, that shit gets crazy when people get twenty thousand, fifty thousand dollars for a walkthrough. Yeah. yeah. Just to walk, come through. Just to have the Get yeah, some bottles. Prestige. That's some what I was. Pictures. Chris Rock was saying last night that he used to DJ. Yeah. Like he was like a real, yeah. like a wax DJ, like yeah. a vinyl DJ. And I was like, you should start doing that and make some real money. I was telling him, I told him the same thing. Previously on the Handsome Rambler Podcast. Uh, I'm good friends with Prince, Prince Paul. Prince and, Paul's dope. And uh, whenever he spins in New York, he lets me know and I go and I'll spin for like, 15 minutes oh minutes. yeah 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 but I'm, rust, I'm rusty yeah you see should... people are like is that chris rock <laughs> <laughs> hey man there's uh money on the table for celebrity djs i pick up i pick up a couple grand here and there <laughs> and i'm not good at all <laughs> i don't blend i just, it's just like seeing a, yeah it's seeing you up there chris rock is up there playing music that's dope it's Animal people Burst yeah is up there it's fun man but we bring the theremin in and the auto tune, and we get, we get crazy. Wow. Yeah. 
<laughs> wow. Yeah, we, we, get, we get weird over here, man. You know, <laughs> shit. This is, uh, you know. Yeah. You can get an extra 50 uh, if, if you wanted to do it separately after yeah. the show. It could be crazy. Yeah. You'd kill it. He could do a whole tour like that. You. 100%. Do, he could do 15 minutes of stand up. And then DJ. I mean, he wouldn't even. Yeah, he could make. Oh, he could like, just do what he does. Is DJ? He plays music and just talks shit on the mic. Yeah. You is know? that what this is? is That's you do the podcast. <laughs> you no. need to be playing well, tricks. It's, it's, it's this, but with just abrupt weird blends <laughs> and shit. Yo, do, do you still uh, do your internet cutoff productivity time? I remember talking I used to you a while yeah, ago. Yeah, the you problem say, is, yeah, like the last couple years, I've been directing a lot of commercials, and I have to, uh, I have to just be on the internet for. It's just constant notes. Or yeah, constant like I just test. constantly got to like email somebody or look at a thing or like, uh, so I can't do it as much. Yeah, but it is. I do. It's still on my computer, but I I override it a lot of the time. Yeah, but it's a better. You know what else though? You know what I realized is that I'm. In some ways, I kind of need to create, like, chaos in my head in order to write jokes. Like, if I'm, like, sort of more, if I'm more, uh, uh, like, inspired by, like, internet articles and fucking, like, all the, reading the New York Times and then reading Huffington Post and, like, Twitter and, Insta- like, it kind of works for idea generation. Right. Like I was I was kind of I was going on the internet less, but I think I was writing less jokes, if that makes sense, because I wasn't as inspired or uh, aroused, as it were. Um, But I do recommend it to anybody who has like I think it's straight up an addiction. Definitely. Yeah. Like the phone and the (laughs) and hit and refresh and scrolling down and fucking like it's a it's a real problem and i love it (laughs) that's the thing is like i love i love my like i love my phone like my phone is so great like if someone said no tv or no phone i'd be like no tv it's like fucking fucking not even i mean do you you get like the dopamine when when you get the likes like when people like it you're like of course yeah it's they've they've shown like they have straight up rehab in asia now oh yeah shit like they have straight up rehab and in South Korea they have internet rehab. Wow. Damn. Yeah. And it's come here too now. Like if you google it, um it's they have it now in the states. I did a uh 7 day silent meditation retreat like a year ago around here actually. It was in like north of uh north of the bay. And um it was no no TV, no radio, no phone. Um, no computer, no writing, no reading. Whoa! It was fucking no board games, nothing. And it was like just talking, just no talking, no talk, silence, silence, complete silence. Yes, but there's other people. Yeah, there's like probably forty other people. So you Um, guys talk to each other like apes, like (laughs) no, (laughs) yeah, Uh, no, we wouldn't talk at all. We didn't. And then by by third, but we would meditate all day. And by the third day. Um, the third day, I think we had like little round, like we could talk for two minutes about our experience. But uh, by that point, I was like, I don't even want to talk. Did like, you t- so you didn't? I did. I did. But it was like pretty brief. What did and, it feel uh, like? It felt. Well, what I realized <laughs> is that all of this internet shit, it like, it's, it makes, I like, when I used to smoke cigarettes and drink coffee, I would wake up in the morning and like fucking douse myself in coffee and smoke like five cigarettes. And like almost shock myself, and I do that now with technology, where it's like I get so stimulated off of the shit that I like sort of wind myself up, and it's that's that's it's not a natural state. I think the natural state is what I was in in the in the in the at the retreat. This is the unnatural state, but it like you forget because we're so surrounded by it. Do you smoke weed? No. See, like um, I notice, because I smoke occasionally now. Now I don't smoke like I used to, because I used to smoke like every day. Like I was like a wake up and talk. Like all day, all day, every day. But now I do it occasionally, and when I do it, I I notice that uh, I don't fuck with my phone at all when I'm high. That's interesting. It's, a, it's almost like I I fear social media. Like yeah, it took me a while to get on the Twitter because Twitter just felt so like um, 
like the Wild West. It just it felt like you were exposing so much, and it just felt so like so connected that I had a fear of it. And then when I'm high, like I get inside my head, like I don't want these people knowing my thoughts or where I'm at or what's going on. <laughs> so like I like stay away from the phone. Like it maybe weed might help. Maybe yeah. You I know? mean I don't. Th- that's the thing is like I I I got. I think it works. Do you know what I mean? Like there are people that are addicted to heroin and they can afford it. Like yeah. you can like we're all addicted to the shit, but it's a it's a entire society and culture built around that addiction yeah. at this point. So I don't think it's like I'm at a I think I'm on the far end of it, like where I'm looking at my phone too much, but like Yeah. But I don't think uh it's like I'm paying a price. Like, right. like you still are you have a job? Yeah, I got a job. I got a but and that part of the job is that. And like making you know making content and all that shit, um, but uh, but yeah, it's not. I it's stimulating is the yeah. is the yeah. is the shitty part. And also, you can accidentally change your life and income through your phone. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> through just some weird video. Yeah, and then you think about that shit is bananas. Yeah, like you. Y- I don't know if uh, you. I don't think you have. But I think the internet's, you're a viral dude. Like, you're a viral, pickle juice went viral. That was, like, your first kind of shit. But I was thinking more just the, you know, the Instagram comedians and other, you know, Snapchat people. Or or how, through this, DJ Khaled took his career to... He's made probably $25 million off of Instagram. (laughs) Snapchat. Yeah, yeah, yes, yes. but yeah, it's so and it what makes that so funny about uh Khaled, I remember watching this video a while back of uh of it was his birthday party and Lil Wayne and a bunch of other people on stage, Rick Ross, T Pain, a bunch of rappers on stage at King of Diamonds and Khaled like Lil Wayne is rapping up there and Khaled is legit just right behind him. Just on his phone. Yeah, <laughs> this is a few years ago. I was yeah. like, "Yo, that dude's weird." That's this is his birthday party. Lil Wayne's rapping right there, and, and I remember rewind. I remember sending it to people like, "Look at this motherfucker." He this had it crazy. At his wife's birth at, at, at uh, Assad. <laughs> I know the yeah. fucking son's name, Assad, <laughs> from uh, from like he was in the, in labor. Uh, but it was just so fun. That was years ago seeing that. Like, damn, he's. I'm, I know I'm into my phone, but I think if Lil Wayne's performing, I'd be like, I'd be like, pocket this real quick. Yeah. Right there. Like, what do he, you do? You don't do the phone thing, do you? At your shows? No. The, the confiscate phones thing? No. That shit is. Uh, he, he was the first to do it, though. Yeah. <laughs> I tried it out, and then. Uh, yeah, I tried it once. It's, they hit me up. It's too expensive, right? It's kind of expensive, yeah. You can build it into the ticket price or whatever. Because I don't think it's that many. It's a handful of people. I, I, and obviously, I don't. my shit doesn't have the same intensity that Rock or uh, Chappelle. That's yeah. where people would put their whole shit yeah. online. Chappelle got whole sets online from before he started doing it. Uh, but That's I just like ask people not to it. do it. I yeah. just ask people not to do it and put up signs. And for the most part... People don't do and you update. can also get it removed immediately, right? Yeah, and you just—I just have my web people. They constantly look for that, and then shout out to Gracie and shout Marcus. Out Gracie. Shout out to Gracie, the cleaner. <laughs> you uh, know what is great though is—is uh, is, this reminded me of watching a uh, lot. But when I before I had the uh, NBA All Access, you could watch games live on YouTube. If you just hit like Warriors and then on and YouTube? then filter live. Mm-hmm. It'll give you, it'll show you a feed, like you can go on your computer and just put in like streaming, right? If you go on Reddit or Google or yeah, whatever. the Reddit, Reddit, yeah, yeah, it's fucking great. I I really like the internet. That's just that's I mean this is kind of a cul-de-sac of a conversation. Yeah, if you if you dig around, if you dig around on the internet, you could pretty much find anything. Yeah, anything. You. But, uh, Internet, I love you. You. 
joy of a fake song <laughs> oh, absolutely like there's nothing more childish than just making songs up just being a noise band yeah a noise band yeah it's so great well i mean in post-production i'll like put some stuff together and try to do beats and make it sound right but for the most part yeah we're just like i mean i'm sure sometimes you can't even get it there Sometimes, yeah, this is good. it's good the way it is. Just, just raw it, emotion. Just keep music. it funky, man. Yeah, that's just great. That's funky. great. That's great advice. Doom, 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 doom. Doom, doom, bum, bum. Doom, 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 doom. When uh, did, did Three Mice come out earlier this year or late yeah, it last came out year? Yeah, January. January. Yeah. This is very brutally honest uh, and good. Very honest. Yeah, man. It made me uncomfortable uh, a couple of <laughs> yeah, times. It's supposed to. I mean, that's. I don't. It's supposed. It's. I was. That was kind of the idea. Is like, what do I? What do I not want to talk about? Yeah. Let me talk about that. That seems like that's yeah. And like. It seems like you were doing like self therapy up there. Yeah, but that's you know? also the thing of like, and then everyone think everyone comes up to me and is like, I have blank. Everyone relates to a different part of it. Mm. Like I have depression. I'm mm. hiding. Yeah. I'm my dad. F- I mean, every single day on Instagram, I get mm. a one or two message of like. So do you always respond? Uh, yeah, for the most part. Yeah. As long as it feels like you know how on Instagram you'll get where you feel like oh this is gonna be like a, a kitten situation where yeah. like if I put out some milk I'm gonna have to keep putting milk out for this motherfucker. <laughs> a kitten um, situation. I like that. Um, where, like if I respond to this person, yeah, no, I feel this you. isn't gonna be the, this isn't gonna be a one off. This isn't yeah. gonna be like piece of dialogue, piece of dialogue. So yeah. there are those people. You're gonna turn into a psychiatrist, basically. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There oh. are those people because you know they're three questions away from like, would you watch my stand up or would you? How would you can like? Can we hang out? Yeah, can we? And it's like yeah. no. Oh man! Like where I, you just real where you can like look at their page and be like, no, they need this. Yeah, I, I know exactly what you're talking about. Where I'll reply once or twice, and then I'll be like, I don't want to, I don't want to keep this going. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and Do then they, to, and you can would, tell that it meant a lot to them, and you're like, yeah, I'm happy that it meant a lot to you, but like, all right, I can't. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not, we can't keep doing this. <laughs> this can't go on. Kitten situation. I like yeah, that. it's, it's a kitten. It's You put a little milk out. It's in Pootie Tang. There's a scene where he puts milk out. Yeah. And everyone comes to the door. It's probably my favorite scene in Pootie Tang, where women come and drink milk from in front of Pootie's door. <laughs> it's a great fucking scene. Um, no, yeah, but Three Mics came out, and uh, it was, uh, people were nice about it, so. Like it's fucking Netflix has so many people. It's a lot of people. A lot of people have Netflix, <laughs> and it's fucking cool as shit. They've taken yeah. over the comedy world. It feels like. Not, yeah. It, yeah, it's not even close. I don't think anyone can even compete. They took like, it over so much that the Def Jam reunion was on Netflix. <laughs> That's crazy. The HBO <laughs> franchise went to Netflix. Wow. Um. 
it would be like the New York Knicks doing a tribute to Michael Jordan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a good analogy. Basically. <laughs> um, by the way, I there's a I've got to give a shout out to an Instagram account called Jumpman History, where they just have old footage of Michael Jordan, and it's all fucking amazing. Oh, I'm gonna love that one. It's so great. Okay. Like it's so great. They yesterday they showed his uh, second game in the NBA, and it's like he was balling. It was fucking look crazy. insane. It's like his. It's almost like if you just said like it was his all time highlights. It was one game. It was the second game in the NBA, and if it was like, if that had been his only game, it would have been like a montage from anyone else's whole career. But this was just one game. Michael Jordan good at basketball. I always say that. Um, You said Michael Jordan is good at good at basketball. Oh. Oh, Boom. Yeah. Yeah. We We up in this bitch. We We on the phone. Everybody got the same ringtone. The phone rang. I don't give a fuck. Energy. And uh, so Hannibal's been not drinking. We had a good time in Chicago. Hannibal said a lot of funny shit. Um, and uh, it's a fun and time. It was a good time. We shot in Chai. And we shot quickly. That was the other thing. It's fast. Like, yeah. how many locations was that the first day? The first day, we must have gone to eight places. Because I was trying to, I was texting somebody on the place we went to, and I forgot about, like, the museum. Yeah, we went to that museum. We went to we went on, like, a uh, River Ride. I forgot the we name. It's on, on Lakeshore Drive. We, it's the Museum of Surgery. It was It was pretty fucking interesting. Oh, wait. I think I know. It's yeah. Chicago Historical, yeah, the Chicago Historical Museum, right? Of, but it was about of medicine, surgery. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I know what you're talking about. Uh, we went it, to the hot dog place. It was we in went, Hyde Park, right? Went to Sluggers. No, we it's on Sluggers. Lakeshore. Lakeshore, like in uh, 1500. Oh, you uh, want the Sluggers? We went to Sluggers. We rode the fucking train by ourselves. We yeah. like commandeered a train. We tra- commandeered the L. Um, Sluggers is like douchebag haven. Yeah, yeah. I realized I had never oh, been in gosh. Sluggers. And it's just one of oh, it's some gosh. blocks where you just like I, I've been in coming to this area for goddamn sixteen years or seven, and I've never. That whole block is just you know what that is. It's just a bunch of it's all the sub, it's all the suburban kids who move into the city and turn the part of the city into the suburbs. Yeah. That's what it is over there. Yeah. It's douchebag central. I can't yeah. stand it. I go yeah, there I, to see the Cubs and to see shows at the metro that's it yeah oh man it's an awful neighborhood i yeah. uh remember john barleycorn yeah i remember that <laughs> i used to dj there back in the day there was this bar called john barleycorn a couple floors it's just a i don't know what i was doing back then i was going out a lot with zero money <laughs> <laughs> just going out and completely you, broke and you would get in it wasn't a cover charge play oh, yeah it. just be there and what would do they have deals or something? Sometimes I guess. I mean, I, you know, you might have a friend buy some drinks or something. Yeah. It's just broke, broke shit. I used to DJ at the spot called Trey Villa. Uh huh. And so one night they shorted me on my pay. This is something ridiculous. They paid me like twenty dollars for spending for like four hours, and they had a downstairs bar, but they didn't open it that night because it was like a Wednesday. So I'm like, Hannibal, let's go downstairs and fucking rob these fools. So we went to the downstairs bar and we just cuffed as many bottles as we could. <laughs> just yeah. like, like grab the top shelf, shit. Let's get the fuck out of here. Great. And we just went back. Yeah, went back to the, to the spot and was just more liquor than we could drink for a week. This yeah. is after you guys dra- graduated from school. This is yeah. This is post college. Yeah. This were is. You, what, you were, were you doing stand up at that point? Yeah. Yeah. He was. That was his open mic days, and that was Great. my. Yeah. DJing for twenty dollars and free beer yeah. days, and just straight up just Struggle. cold snitched on us. <laughs> <laughs> huh? Who snitched? <laughs> I'm talking about Tony. I'm with about Tony yeah. snitching, yeah. snitching now. Just, this yeah. doesn't even exist anymore. I know, yeah. but yeah. you know, no, but the you motherfuckers know. they probably own a bar in Chicago. They got yeah. long memories, man. <laughs> oh, I, I remember we were sold on the you Great Goose. If they would have, you know what? If they would have paid me correctly, hey, not, none of this would have happened. Business is business. You gotta, yeah. And they, that was what well, we took two bottles or three. Uh, no, we took like four. 
Yeah. We took two bottles yeah, of Grey Goose, a bottle of whiskey, and a bottle of something else. <sighs> and you kept singing the Nas lyric. Got you were like uh, Grey Goose and, and a, a whole, whole lot, lot of hydro. hydro. Yeah. You kept saying that. Sounds over. about right. I like I like on the nose. <laughs> yes. Song when lyrics. Yeah, Situation. Ab- <laughs> absolutely. Yo, we uh, you know, it's this song Migos got. Uh, <laughs> And one of the lines, the rap is, snacks one. You was no, pop, popping, was that, popping the other day that at the deli. Yeah, because we, we cause, just because the store we were shooting in had rap snacks, so I kept on playing Dabberet. But they also have a song. Uh, What's it called? Motherfucking tired. That's the name of it. Motherfucking tired off of uh, yeah. the album Culture. And they got a line where they say, I just got a burger from Five Guys. Hey, go, I just put the model bit five times. I just ate a burger from Five Guys. Five guys. <laughs> And, and you do that, and we ordered, that? and we ordered some Five Guys when we were out at Coachella, and I just kept on playing that line over and over. Yeah, why wouldn't you? <laughs> I just got a burger from Five, Five guys. guys. It just felt great. Yeah, great. Why not? You I'm, fuck with festivals, right? Yeah. You yeah. just enjoy the the whole scene. I just, I mean, as a perform, I enjoy uh, doing my show and then being able yeah. to just go chill and watch shit. And it's nice to be able to do stand up and then not have to watch stand up. Yeah, and just chill like it's a fucking to, treat. Yeah, watch all type. It's just fun. You get to see. I mean, I enjoy getting uh, just because of you know how we travel. We get to see people we don't normally see yeah. and, and hang out and shit. So, but this year we got. I I personally felt festivaled out. We we didn't like did maybe six festivals. We did this six summer. festivals, but then I went to like four because my friends just randomly have like VIP fans. Yeah, you can't turn that down. Yeah, it was a Lollapalooza stand, standing next to Anthony Rizzo and uh, Obama's daughter. Just yeah. you know, like Obama's you, can't, you can't. You can't. <laughs> Who's Anthony Rizzo? Cubs player. Oh, all right, yeah. that's what I thought. Yeah. 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 Getting drunk, throw my ice in the crowd. Wow, got to smile since I was a young child. Wow, smoke a whole carton of pow mouths. Got the black and mild, switched up my rapping style. I'm friends with Jesse McIntyre. Go to the strip club, I don't smack ass, I be smacking thighs You be attracting lies This my rap disguise There, man, this shit is smoking like the tenders of a Nancy Kerrigan. <laughs> I didn't get the delivery right on that, but the <laughs> Brennan on the theremin. This shit is smoking like the tenders of Nancy Kerrigan. It needs some syllables out. Hold up, I'm gonna nail this line. <laughs> Brennan on the theremin. This shit is spinning like the tenders of Nancy Kerrigan. I cut my hair again, I cut it every week I'm a black dude, I gotta have a fresh cut in the streets Nah, I get scruffy Vampire, your mom's is Buffy Imagine seeing your mom Yo, 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 yo Imagine seeing your mom's on Flavor of Love <laughs> Yo Mama, is that you? Why flavor love kissing you in the mouth in front of cameras? I really can't understand this. What's up with this era of television? You and ten other women was trying to get attention from flavor?
Cohesive sessions we've had. Is that true? Yeah. Yeah. I felt, you were. I felt, you were in I came. The in, I got out of the pocket. Yeah. You were. You were in. I it. was laughing as hard. If you want to see me laugh, if anyone ever needs footage of me laughing really hard, when you started talking about Nancy Kerrigan and Flavor of Love, <laughs> I was literally. I felt. Ex, I felt pure ecstasy, and I thought if we, this would be some kind of life, if we were to figure this out, yeah, and become a like a real outfit and right. go on the road. Yeah, and just do nonsense. I'm down. I'm trying to figure out how to how to conf- figure this out for television. I'm trying to figure out the how to you know what I mean? As a as like its own show. Yeah. The, just that seg segment. No, the whole podcast. I want to convert it into a television show. All right, let's let's talk this out. TV loves segments. That's right. what Eric Andre. That's what Eric Andre is the the probably the most dada fucking abstract bing bong show of all time yeah yeah people um, love that show too but and the reason it's <clears throat> it works is because it feels like whatever you, whatever sequence you're in is not going to last more than 40 seconds true right. and then you can do the freeze and the do yeah yeah and then you're on to the next one if you figured out a way to do those i mean you would almost if you had directions for the songs, that would help. If it was just like mm. people wrote in and the people need a song about whatever. Right. And then you could take it from there. And I want I want Hannibal on the theremin and the auto tune. <laughs> Fuck, that made me laugh so hard. There was just a real... That's my favorite shit in the world, is what we just did. That level of nonsense. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's really like any girlfriend I've ever had will tell you like oh and editor Bijan the Bijan who edited Chappelle show and a bunch of other shit knows that I love nonsense yeah um, and uh, so I mean I think we're all on the same page here yeah so if you figure out a way to do what's that I think our cameras are dead oh it's all good That's cameras fine. dead that's what I said we don't never ca- we don't need no cameras. This is shit is bonus footage. If you just listen, then you're gonna get it on your foot. Get it. Da, 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 da. Walking, walking down the street up in Oakland. You, I'm trying to catch. That's a tough beat to catch, but I want to try to catch it. You can do it. Yeah. Went up into the street. Went up into the cupboard, grab everything I need, put it all in the oven. I'm burning all over my spine. <laughs> that was about to be a song about burning up everything from the pantry to the oven. Put it from the pantry uh, uh, to the oven. Hey, from the pantry to the oven. Burn it up from the pantry. In the oven, what you say it don't go there, it go where I put it, put it up in there, turn it to 400, burn it paprika, shit smell all spice, the plastic is melting, the shit is not nice, leave it melting, and it's burnt, the shit is done, now it's my turn, go back to the cupboard, gotta find something else to put up in the oven, let's go with the pepper, with the peppercorns and the grinder. Say don't put it in there, where's this plastic come from? Looks like made in China, no matter, still put it in the oven You say don't burn pepper, You're supposed to put it on something? Nah, gonna put it in the oven, straight burn it Pepper burn it, now the shit is all smelling Now I'm sneezing up in the kitchen Cause the 
pepper fumes got me dripping. God damn, shouldn't I put that pepper in the oven? Gotta leave the room, grab a gas mask. Nah, gas mask, that's a bit too much. I grab one of those masks that everybody that wear when they live in Japan. Yeah, that's light enough, not enough material, but it gets the job done. Put something else in the oven. Yeah, grab. <laughs> Yeah. So there's that. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> That's the shit. Is you'll just be sitting here and then one of us will catch it. Yeah. And you just gotta go. You gotta go you in. Gotta yeah. spirit you, in. you conjure it up. Yeah, man. And you fucking serve it, you give it out. Well you know what I mean. This party has, has gotta come to an end. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. It was but fun. I feel like as a fan of the clips of the show. Yeah. It was, a, and I would always think, the fuck is, when is Hannibal going to bless me <laughs> <laughs> with an appearance? I feel like, um, I feel like this is as, as I mean, I, I'm a little under the weather, so yeah. you'll have to forgive me, but, uh, but I feel like I'm really strangely proud of the fact that we had one of what you consider one of the better. One, that was one of the most cohesive ones. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that feels good. Um, you, yeah. You, you, you felt it, you caught it, you yeah. went with it. It was when it hand with the Nancy Kerrigan shit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And uh, Brennan on a theremin. Brennan, Brennan on Burning a theremin. it up like the tendons of Nancy and Kerrigan. Kerrigan. <laughs> <laughs> let's, take, yeah, let, let's take it out on the song, okay? Yeah. Let's do it. Brennan. 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 Thank you, Brendan. Yeah. That was awesome. 